hello and welcome back. So 30 days have passed since the game has been released and as the reward we did get the prototype battlecruiser from the last beta and this is the ship that was very popular in the last beta and it was very powerful. I did get around 1.9 to 2.5k DPS in the last beta on this ship and it was one of the most powerful ships in the game at the time. But now that was of course changed and the ships were reworked and now the ship is more balanced. It is still however very powerful and I do enjoy flying this ship a lot. It, it is very unique in a lot of aspects and one of these aspects is that the ship is a faction battlecruiser. It is a special edition ship and it does not have any skill per level bonuses, but of course it does have the roll bonuses, which are also very nice. Now, it is generally common for the prototypes not to have skill per level bonuses, and that's fine. Uh, I don't mind that, since these ships are, after all, more of a collectionable item. Now, this ship has one drone, four high slots, three medium slots, four low slots, and three rigs each for the weapons and for the engineering section. Now, the resistances are the same as with any other ship and overall the ship is generally very large and the ship is very slow. And after all, it is a battlecruiser and with skills for battlecruisers you can increase the ship's velocity, the ship's capacitor and of course the ship's shield, armor and hull. Now on to my modules, I do have 285 DPS at the moment with the current build and with the current skills. Of course that is with the particle accelerator modules turned off. When I have the particle accelerators activated then I can get around 500 DPS with this ship. Now the medium decomposers are very powerful and they do a lot of damage. This ship has four of these modules in the weapons in the high slots and these weapons do have the power to one shot a lot of frigates and to one shot a lot of the destroyers and this ship is still very powerful and it can be used in pvp quite well now i don't like to fly these ships in pvp because after all they are special edition ships and they can be repaired with the vouchers, but once you run out of the vouchers then the ship might be lost forever if you happen to lose the ship. In the medium slots I do have two neutralizers, a webifer and of course I do have a medium drone this time around. The particle accelerators are very very good modules and I do like the I do like to use two or three of these modules with this ship. It is one of my habits from the last beta since I used to have four of these modules in the in the beta version of this ship and they were working very good and they did give you a very decent DPS boost and in the last beta this ship was very lethal because of these particle accelerators combined with the over with the overall very powerful weaponry that this ship came with and of course I do have a Republic Fleet Afterburner to increase the ship's velocity, because after all 120 meters per second is indeed very slow. Now to simulate the DPS in the actual usage, I warp to this planet and let's see the ship's fitting. Now the DPS is around 500 and yeah it is 492, which is very nice for, the, for a prototype ship and it is quite usable in PvE. Now of course with rigs I can increase my DPS since at the moment I didn't use any rigs on this ship since I am setting up my ISK for, for the high grade rigs and I can push out with the current uh, with the current skills I can push out at least 600 or 700 DPS with this ship and that is quite nice compared to for example my Caracal Navy has 350 dps and this ship has 498 dps which is very nice for for a prototype battlecruiser 
Now, performance-wise, this ship does perform like a tier 6 cruiser, and that's generally okay. And it is still very nice to get a ship that is on the same power level as a tier 6 cruiser for free. And its performance is indeed very impressive. It has nice range, which of course I think I can increase with the range enhancement tricks that I might go for since I, I'd like to have the, the composers at at least 50 kilometers since that's the safe range that I like to use ships in these missions at and if I don't decide to go with the ranged rigs I will go with the damage rigs since then I can theoretically maybe get around 1000 dps with this ship if I manage to get 1000 dps on this ship again then this will be one of the this would be one of the better prototypes that we did get in the game so far since 1000 dps for a free prototype ship is very nice now of course i will have to check that out when i get the rigs and i'll be working to get the rigs very soon but overall its performance its alpha damage is quite high it hits over 1500 damage most of the time and that is enough to pop most of the frigates in the game including the elite frigates which can also withstand a lot of damage but i think this ship will be very efficient against those as well since they also like to use the micro op drives which will make their signature radius a lot larger and in that case i can hit those ships a lot more efficiently and i am very satisfied with this ship's performance it does work quite well and it, in some aspects, it actually outperforms my Caracal Navy. And my skills for the Caracal Navy are a lot better than the skills that I have on this ship. And even with such skills that I currently have, this ship still performs quite well. And this ship still is melting everything that I aim these turrets at. And that is very impressive for a free ship. Well, now as for the resistances, you can also make the ship very tanky since after all it has three of these weapon rigs and in the weapon rigs you can also place rigs for resistance and I will potentially do that to make the, to make the ship a lot more tankier since this ship since it has already three of these weapon rigs you can use it to you can use those slots to make at least 80 percent resistances on all damage types and of course on top of that you can also place a invulnerability field which will of course improve ship resistances by by a big portion and in that case you can make this ship a very nice tank now speaking of tank, this ship has a lot of shield and a lot of hull. Its armor isn't that impressive. And that means you can make the ship to be either a shield tank or a hull tank. Now for a hull tank, I think that I am not going to try that out since this ship is after all a special edition ship. But you can make those ships be a hull tank if you like since they have a lot of hull and they have a lot of shield. But I think it is safer to keep the ship on the shield tank since you can warp out if your, shi if your shield gets low. And in that case, I did decide to go with the shield tank on this ship. Now, in most cases here you are going to see me using two or three of these particle accelerators because I do like the... I do like the DPS output on the ship with those particle accelerators and they do a very good job at taking out these rats. Now you might notice that I turned the weapon on and off that is because there was a bug in the game that or not a bug but the servers were very uh, the servers were very laggy and in some cases the weapon did fire but I did I didn't do any damage 
so I decided to turn the weapon on and off to do damage because that wasn't because that wasn't glitched out for some reason and for the missions you can use the ship even for the storyline missions because the ship does perform quite well it, it has the DPS for those missions and it can have the tank for those missions and if I think about it and I am already thinking about it I can trade the DPS for a superior tank and I can attempt to clear the storyline missions with this ship since this ship is powerful and it does offer some very impressive performances for for a free ship and I think that I will go for the resistances on this ship or I might test out both the resistance build and the full DPS build and of course the full range build. Now for the resistances I will go with a this time around I need a faction I need a faction in vulnerability field because the Mark V is kind of underperforming and I need those extra resistances to to ensure that the ship will not that the ship will not get destroyed and for the rigs I do need to get the better rigs for the resistances and I need the level 3 or level 4 rigs. Now so far I did have quite a bit of fun with with flying this ship in the live version of the game. For missions it is performing quite quite impressive. I like the I like the overall DPS on this ship and the range. It is quite balanced and of course it is nowhere near the DPS that the ship did have in the in the last beta since in the last beta the ship easily could have gotten around 1.9 1.9k DPS which is a lot of DPS for a prototype but thankfully the developers did balance things out and now the ship is a lot more balanced and it is still fun to it is still fun to fly now i'm not quite sure if you can buy or if you can sell this ship i did notice that you cannot destroy the ship in the hangar since the destroy button was unavailable when i tap on the ship so I'm not quite sure if you can buy this ship if you don't have it or I'm not quite sure if you can even sell it but since this is a special edition ship and when people start running out of the vouchers since the vouchers are also a limited edition stuff once these ships get rarer and that will happen because as time goes on people will sell these ships if possible, people will destroy these ships again if possible and people will lose these ships in combat whether it be PvP or PvE the number of these ships will slowly reduce will slowly get reduced as time goes on and at some point these ships might be very rare and of course they might be very expensive so I would suggest that if you have these ships that you keep those ships safe and if you use them for missions, use them for missions that you are 100% sure that you will not lose them in and if you end up losing them make sure to save the vouchers for, for repairing these ships since at the moment I did see the ship's worth is around 150 million isk which is quite a quite a price that's twice as more expensive compared to the Caracal Navy and compared to the other tier 6 cruisers and I think that if I if I end up using this ship for storyline missions that I will go with full resistances on this ship because the storyline missions can be quite tricky and I will have to be prepared for for a very very serious combat and especially in the tier 10 storylines now I will keep increasing my decomposer skills to make the ship more effective and in the end when I have all the decomposer skills maxed out I think I'll have around 700 or 800 DPS with the current fit and of course over 1000 DPS if I decide to go full full damage mode on the on the rigs which is still impressive 
and for a prototype it is indeed very good. Now the first prototype, the banana ship or the destroyer, is nice, but that ship kind of does feel like a prototype. Now this ship is a lot more usable than the than the banana ship because this ship is after all a battle cruiser and it does have some very very nice DPS. Now the banana also has a very decent DPS but the banana is after all a destroyer and destroyers usually have less DPS than the cruisers and battle cruisers which means that this ship will be one of the well compared to the other battle cruisers I think this ship will be weaker than the other battle cruisers because it is after all a 40% nerf to to the prototypes but still it is a battle cruiser and it will perform like a tier 6 ship which is still very nice and it means that you can generally use this ship for whatever you like now for PvP Solo PvP with this ship, I don't think that it is a good idea because this ship is, after all, slow and slow ships are usually easy targets for smaller fleets and, of course, for larger fleets. So if you decide to do PvP with this ship, then I recommend that you go in a fleet since a fleet of these ships can be very dangerous since you can imagine how much DPS and how much damage output 10 of these ships in a fleet can have. For example, if I can have around 1.5, 1,500 alpha on this ship, then having 10 of these ships multiplies that number by 10, which means 15,000 15, alpha damage, which is indeed impressive and especially if you have also high DPS besides high alpha, then most ships are not going to survive when they get jumped by 10 of these prototype battlecruisers, which will make these ships potentially very fun in fleets. Because, like I said before, these ships will be very rare in the, n in the near future if people do end up losing a lot of these ships. Well, so far these missions are progressing quite nice, and the missions are they're easy, and I do like to do the advanced missions. Soon I will jump on the expert missions, which will also be very interesting. And it is also very interesting to note that since this is a faction battlecruiser, you will not have the danger icon when you do, for example, tier 8 or tier 9 anomalies and of course missions because faction ships are counted as elite ships and as elite ships they are counted as the highest tier which means that if you have this ship you have to be very careful at the higher tier missions because the higher tier missions can be dangerous and of course the higher tier anomalies and the higher tier storyline missions can be very dangerous Whenever you jump in one of these missions, you have to be ready and prepared to fight a lot of waves of very high tier ships. And I remember reading somewhere on, I think, I think it was in the official Discord, I think it was there, I'm not quite sure, that someone warped in in a tier 6 storyline mission with a tier 6 ship and they got destroyed because they went AFK. So the ship tier and the ship tier mission recommendation isn't quite isn't quite the thing that you should look at when you are doing these missions. For example, I do storyline missions with my tier 6 Caracal at the moment, and even the tier 6 storylines can be very difficult. So the tier 6 in the mission usually means the ship tier that you are going to fight. And you should always always be prepared to fight for a very long time and of course you should always prepare for the enemy ships to be very powerful and very dangerous. So keep that in mind when you are doing these missions since these missions can be very, very dangerous. And But here 
I am doing these missions that aren't that difficult and I am still trying to see how the ship works and I have to say so far the ship did work quite well. I will jump on the more serious missions in the next video since I do want first to let my decomposer skills level up since I do need my decomposer skills level up if I want to do storylines with this thing and of course I do need ISK for rigs to increase either the ship resistance or the ship range. Now if I go with the ship range then that might be also easier for me to do a lot, a lot more damage because then I don't have to approach enemy ships. But if I decide to go full on resistance then I can make the ship be very tanky and then I can engage enemy ships in close combat. And which one of these I will go first? I don't know, I'll have to decide that. But I think most likely it will be range because I am already used to snipe a lot of ships. And it will be very interesting to see how the ship will perform in in such environment and of course with such fittings and in the storyline missions. Since if I manage to successfully, without much problem, clear the storyline missions with this ship, then that will be a very good thing for a lot of players, since this is a free ship that will be capable at clearing storyline missions, and that is just perfect, since then you don't have to buy a Caracal Navy, or you don't have to buy the Vexors, which all have very decent range. If, of course, you can get this ship for free, then that would be that would be amazing, and I am very curious to see its performance when I when I get the modules. And of course, I will I will have to get the modules, the higher grade rigs, because the low grade rigs are not going to do a very good job. And I think for me it is time to uh, start using the higher grade rig modules, since they are after all a lot better than the than the tier 1s, for example. Well, the I think this will be the last wave of enemy ships, and after that I'll have to end the video. The capacitor is stable, despite the capacitor warning, and I think that if I decide to go full range, that I'll have a capacitor battery just in case, as always, since the capacitor battery is saving, is saving a lot of, is saving a lot of capacitor, and in some cases it also saved me from losing my ships and it, al it also helps when you're fighting rats that do have neutralizers and of course it is good if your ship is using a lot of capacitor with its modules and if you need capacitor then capacitor batteries are perfect for the job well couple more couple more hits and of the and the last ship will be destroyed I have to say I am very impressed by the ship, I did not expect it to be this powerful, but in the end it turns out that the ship is indeed very strong even in the official release of the game, and I am very curious to experiment with the ship a lot more, since at the moment I do like how the ship is performing. I do like how the ship is performing a lot, and like I said before, I'll be doing a lot more fittings for the ship and of course I'll change the rigs and I'll change other things. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe and I'll see you next time. Take care.